events. It's another amazing opportunity to bring church to your home. Welcome to Church in the Home. Today promises to be an exciting moment in God's presence. But before we continue this service, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We are grateful for this amazing opportunity you've given to us. We ask that the rest of the service today be an exciting and educating moment. And let's have an encounter with you, Jesus. Thank you because we know that at the end of this service, we'll have every cause to glorify your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen. Do enjoy the rest of the service. I don't want to sing the latest song I don't want to percolate the crowd I just want to make you smile I don't care who thinks I'm right or wrong I don't care who tries to calm me down I just want to praise you You cover me in the midst of it all. You love me. You gave me another chance. You saw my needs when others saw my faults. You forgave me. I don't have to listen for my name They don't have to walk me down the aisle I just wanna make you proud Should I make the Hall of Fame Or they save a special seat I just hope that you'll be pleased You covered me in the midst of it all You love me Gave me another chance You rescued me I was going to fall, going to fall You saved me So in my life Glorify, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say, praise. you get the glory, you get the praise, take all of the honor, I just want to say, you get the glory, I want you to get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say, the glory. You get the glory, Father. You get the praise, you, you take the honor. I just want to say, I've come back to say. Welcome again to February. February is a beautiful month. I'm sure you might be guessing why, but for so many beautiful reasons, one is that we're alive in 2021. And look at this month is a little bit unique. It's because we'll be meditating on scriptures, and that scripture, Psalm 91. Today, I'll be reading 
and you will be memorizing. But hey, relax. You don't need to read your entire letter because you know the scripture says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth light. Life, rather. So here's what I need you to do for me. As I read and as you listen and as you see it written on your screen, take the verse that most applies to you today and memorize that tomorrow. Something else will come to life to you. So can we do that? All right. Psalm 91. And I'm using the King James Bible. You could use any version of the Bible you want to. So let's go. He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snares of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings shall I take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor darkness that destroys that lays at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and then ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. I like to say that again for myself. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For the Lord will give his angels charge over me, that I shall not dash my foot against the stone. This kind of help me makes me feel like a superhero, yeah? There are people who are guiding me that make sure I don't dash my foot against the stone. So I'll read that again for you to hear. That's my own scripture. For the Lord shall give his angel charge over me, that I shall not dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon lions and cobra, and young lions and serpents, and they shall tremble under my feet. You know, those other superhero move. Nothing harms me. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore he will deliver me. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He, I shall call upon him. He shall call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. This is God's promise. The last verse. Interesting. He shall call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. See, I found two, three verses that I really, really like. So I'm just going to say them again for myself so you could find yours. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him. And I will honor him. God has superpowers. And God's superpowers are mine. So, there we have it, our nugget for this month. I hope they bless you as you read them. See ya. Hi, royalties, teenagers, preteens, good to be in your face again. Um, today's word is a question, and I have a series of questions for you to answer. And we're going to start in a very unusual way. I'm going to read our Bible basis for today. It's in Job chapter 38 from verse 4 to 41. Yes, pretty long. And it has a lot of questions, but these are the questions that are the basis for what we're going to be doing today. So are you ready? So let's go. So Job chapter 38 verse 4 to 41. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst forth from the womb and as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it with thick darkness? For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, this far and no farther will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? As the light approaches, the earth takes shape like clay pressed beneath a seal. 
it is robed in brilliant colors. The light disturbs the wicked and stops the arm that is raised in violence. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Have you explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you know the extent of the earth? Tell me if you know. Where does light come from? And where does darkness go? Can you take each to his home? Do you know how to get there? But of course, you know all this. For you were born before it was all created and you are so very experienced. Have you visited the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of hail? I have reserved them as weapons for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Where is the path to the source of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created a channel for the torrents of rain? Who laid out the path of lightning? Who makes the rain fall on barren land in a desert where no one lives? Who sends rain to satisfy the parched ground and makes the tender grass spring up? Does the rain have a father? Who gives birth to the dew? Who is the mother of ice? Who gives birth to frost of the heavens? From the water turns to ice as hard as rock and the surface of the water freezes. Can you direct the movement of the stars, binding the cluster of plates or loosening the cords of Orion? Can you direct the constellations through the seasons or guide the bear with her cubs across the heavens? Do you know the laws of the universe? Can you use them to regulate the earth? Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct? Who gives intuition to the heart and instinct to the mind? Who is wise enough to count all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven when the patch ground is dry and the soil has hardened into clods? Can you stalk prey for a lioness and satisfy the young lion's appetite as they lie in their dens or crouch in their thicket? Who provides food for the ravens when their young cry out to God and wander about in hunger? <laughs> Amazing scripture. A lot of questions and a hint of sarcasm. Our topic for today is who is God? I particularly like the question that God asks in this particular passage. Who is the father of rain? Who is the mother of ice? Can you answer that? Now, I know that a lot of you have questions about who is God and God seems like some abstract but God is knowable who is he where does he live who created him where does he come from is he human does he eat is he a spirit these and much more are some of the questions we'll be delving in this season of who is God but for today we're just going to go through a little background and then we'll build up on it as we go now there was an argument at some point. Um, Napoleon, maybe you should go and Google who he is. But Napoleon was standing on the ship and some of the officers on the ship were arguing, saying that there was no God, you know, pretty much like today, having very baseless arguments, if you ask me, about God. And then they decided that, you know, their organ Napoleon should give a final verdict. And they asked him if he believed in the existence of God. And you know what he said? He looked around. As you can see, I'm outside. This is a fantastic way to do this class. He looked around. He looked at the sky, looked at grasses, looked at everything and he asked them, this cannot be mere coincidence. Someone must have done this. Another story and then we'll go to the truth for today. So a meat chopper, owner of a meat factory, sits down one day and he's explaining to a friend of his that he knows that there is such a thing called the Big Bang, you know, and people have said that there was just this Big Bang and then the world came into position and millions of galaxies somehow 
intellectually arrange themselves in order without co colliding with anything and they are existing with their own orbits and everything. And he said, he's just a meat, the owner of a meat shopping factory. But really, can you shake the contents of a mixed grinder and it will arrange itself into place? Let's bring it home. If we scatter this phone, shake it apart, or maybe your laptop, break it into pieces and we shake it will it magically become a phone no it is not mere coincidence that the world is as it is it is not mere coincidence that everything is put together in structure and in order there has to be someone there has to be something and that's what we are talking about today god is that someone created the universe he is the one from where time began. He exists outside time. So we're going to just run through a couple of truths about who God is. And then I'm going to be giving you a lot of scriptures at the end of today's lesson so that you can find more about God. But even looking at our Bible basis for today, you'd realize that God is amazing. So the first thing, that we're going to talk about is God is spirit. Yes, spirit. You can't touch him. He's not material. He's essence. He's everywhere. He exists outside time. The Bible says through him, all things were made that were not in existence. See, the God you serve is awesome. I want to use the illustration of the balloon. I wish I had one today, but if you're at home, try the experiment with me. So when you take a balloon, it's pretty much empty. Then you blow into it. What makes you believe that there is air inside that balloon? Because you see the manifestations, right? Yes, but you cannot touch the air in it. It's pretty much how God is. Essence, he's in everything. He's like air, you can't see it, but you know it's there because you can feel the effects. You can feel it as it rifles through grass, nature, trees. You just know that God is there. His spirit cannot be touched, cannot be seen, cannot be felt, but you know he's there. That's one thing. Number two, God is Trinity. Now of all the things that God is, <laughs> this is one that will probably never fully understand how God can be three persons in one or one person in three. But the closest we can get to that analogy is water. Water can, we're going to do a little science, you know, science lesson here. Water can exist in three different states, right? It can exist in ice, it can exist in vapor, and then it exists in liquid form, true? Very good. You were listening in your science class. God is a bit like that, but it doesn't take the fact, it take away from the fact that water is still water. Whether it's in gaseous state, or it's in liquid state, or it's in solid state. God is, as Trinity, is a little like that. You know, He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all of them have different functions and all of them coexist as one. Don't worry. By the time we get deeper, you will understand. But just know, God is your father. He manifests as Jesus the Son, and he is with you even now as the Holy Spirit, guiding you and getting you to understand all truth. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, and he is knowable because he constantly reveals himself to you in his word. So let's just go through a couple of scriptures that I would like to read. Like I said, today we're doing like a lot of scriptures because to know God, he has revealed himself in his word. And that's the only way we can know him. So I'll just go through a couple of scriptures with you. So first we said God is spirit. Second, we said God is Trinity. And um, lastly, let's just look at, He's the source of all things. But we kind of said it at the beginning. From Him, 
all things were created. From him, all things exist. From him, all things are made. The God you serve, your God is awesome. I will keep saying how amazing and how wonderful and how awesome he is because this is the beginning of this series, Who is God? So that your trust, your confidence, your faith is in the character of who God is. If he tells you something, then you should believe him because a God who can create all this, create you according to design, like not one thing about you is out of place. Your eyes are where they should be. Your nose is where it should be. God is a God of design and he pays attention to the slightest and minutest detail. That kind of God is worthy to be trusted. Our memory verse is in Psalm 90 verse 2. And he says, Long before you gave birth to the earth and before the mountains were born, you have been there from everlasting to everlasting. The one and only true God. This topic excites me because you know how a lot of things are happening in the world today and you kind of ask the question, if God is here, why are all these things happening? Can I trust him? How do I trust someone I don't see? Are you sure he's even aware of what's going on? The more you know of God, the more confident you are, the more you know of yourself also, because in him, all things were made. Imagine getting a new phone. It's a very poor illustration, really. But imagine getting a new phone and to navigate the phone, you have to read the manual. To get to know who you are, what you're about, your purpose, your existence, why you are here, why the world is even created, you have to know who God is. And this is why we're here today. God is spirit. He is the source of all things. God is Trinity. And long before anything that you can see was created, God is. Not was, but is. On your screen, there are going to be a couple of um, Bible verses so that you can know more about God. But we can start from the very beginning. You can start from your Bible basis, which is Job chapter 38, 4 to 41, and then go to Genesis, the beginning of beginnings, to find out who God is, how he is, what his nature is like, and find out all the wonderful things that God has done and is still doing even today. Isaiah is another good place to look. Now, if you've been with me on this online journey or even in in-person services, you know that I have a really soft spot for Isaiah. And Isaiah is another person who explains and tries to paint a picture of who God is. We might not fully be able to grasp everything that God is because like a songwriter says, he's too wonderful for comprehension. But you see, one thing that you should know is that God is with you, God is everywhere, and God loves you. Till next time, just stay with this. Stay with it. Let's brood on it. Let it stay in your heart this week. Write out, get a journal. Write out everything from the scriptures and the home play that you would see who, about who God is, what his nature is like, where you can find him how you can see him all these things are very 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 important okay so this is where we're going to close today's service i'm very very sure that you had a great time in service so this is where we're going to close today's service i'm very sure you had a great time in service today from the worship to the word who is god and I'm very sure that you have more questions. Don't worry about this. We're going to be building up on everything that we have said today. But just know this, that God loves you. Yes, he does. He really, really does. The creator of this fantastic world and the universe loves you. And he is every bit fond of you, especially fond of you. Have this knowledge in your head. Conquer your world in Jesus' name. Now, don't forget, follow us on 
all our social media platforms, all of them. It means Telegram, WhatsApp, YouTube, watch the series. We're doing this because we want the word of God to reach you just where you are. Send in your questions. We'd love to hear from you. All right? Till I come your way next time. God bless you. Conquer your world in Jesus' name.